The beginnings are always so weird. <laughs> Hello everyone. My name's Amelie Grace, but you already read that in the intro. So I'm just going to connect with you <laughs> and say, <laughs> Hello fellow human, bearing witness to this video. I am happy to be here today and I'm feeling a continued synthesis of what we've been exploring with Pluto and the 61st Gene Key in the first video of the series, and how it now wants to bring in Saturn and the 60th Gene Key, as well as a little bit of dosing of kind of the synthesis of all of these. Really, I want to look at how the 61st Gene Key and the 60th kind of bleed into one another and synthesize. and kind of what story are they telling by, you know, the fact that Saturn and Jupiter both passed through the 61 and made conjunctions with Pluto in that key and then both have moved into the 60. Like, how is it feeding back? And we're going to talk about the evolution of the archetypes. Really, we're going to focus on the evolution of Saturn in our experience as we evolve. So the archetypes evolve with us. So in looking at this merge of the 60 and the 61, first the 60th gene key is the shadow of limitation and the gift of realism and the city of justice. And this is a powerful key when it comes to our relationship with matter and structures and at the gift, it shows how we can become masters in creating structures that support the energy moving through them and serve consciousness rather than the structures themselves. So how topical, as the structures in our world are changing and as we ourselves are changing. I think one of the things that the 61st and the 60th say together is that the external forms in the world, the structures of the world, mirror and take the shape of our internal psychic structures. And how if we can unhinge from the previously limiting frameworks, of how we've been operating in the shadows of psychosis and its programming partner intellect and align our consciousness to the field of universal mind. Then we sync up our system to the matrix of matter and the interwoven vibrating fields that make up the fabric of existence. In this gene key, uh, the gift of realism talks about how matter is just vibrating fields of energy. And if we align our consciousness with this field, then the structures of ourself and then the world will begin to mirror the coherent beauty and efficiency of the underlying geometric structures of space-time. This reminds me of Dr. Emoto's water crystals uh, research where, you know, the frequency moving through the vehicle will change the shape of the water crystal itself. And we are these vehicles of water. And so whatever's passing through us as far as our consciousness is really giving a shape to whether you know we're in the beauty of this nice looking snowflake <laughs> or in a maybe more incoherent state. And something important when considering coherence and the significance that it plays at this time to pull us out of dissonance, you know, and into a more aligned frequency with where we're evolving into and like 
when I become more myself and reach more of my potential, I'm operating in greater coherence. That it's not just moving into the perfected crystal state and just staying there, that it's actually a dynamic equilibrium between chaos and order. It's a chaotic process that requires the tension of both. And so to me, it's really important and it seems like it's really easy to go to that place of like, oh, well, I'm not feeling so good, so oh, I, need to, I need to go be coherent. Let me leave where I'm at to become coherent. And I think that's a trap because actually coherence is being with wherever we're at. And that can really cut some of the spiritual bypassing out of the system. I highly recommend a documentary. It's called Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. And whoa, it's amazing. <laughs> in it, one of the pieces I want to bring in is they talk about how only 1% of a collective is needed to create a phase shift in the entire collective. So when it comes to creating a coherent evolution in consciousness, only 1% or around that of people are needed. So yes, there is a significance to creating that state and the 61 and 60 really, you know, lead us towards that inner truth and infusing the magic that we discover there into the forms of life. So one thing that's become very clear to many of us is that the narrative on the planet and in our own lives is evolving. And we can really see that in the planets with not only Pluto in the 61, but Jupiter, which is the meaning maker in conjunction with Pluto, the mutative force. So we're mutating the meaning that we make about our lives, the particulars, about a series of events, you know, the the sense that we make and how we understand ourselves. So add Saturn in there and there's this refinement of the internal scripts. Saturn, I, I want to dive in here. We're going to dive into Saturn and the role that it's playing in our consciousness as well the vehicle that it's providing inside of our systems to evolve into a higher frequency of operations inside of the realm of Saturn. Saturn is coming into a higher octave. At a time when so much fundamental restructuring is happening in the world, I mean, Saturn moving through these keys and in conjunction with these planets is a real ally because it's checking the internal scripts for integrity. Am I aligning my narrative and so my life to the arc of evolving consciousness? The gene keys are super helpful with this because we can see that spectrum of frequency where the shadows are, you know, kind of diagnose like where we're at and, and we can feel it when we're in the gift state and that's this lift off. And honestly, again, it's not about like not you know pushing away the shadow states it's about working with them and riding the wave of evolution because we are being made by these times these keys are us they're in us and so the living transmission of wisdom is opening up if we're if we decide to adapt our narrative to in, you know contemplate and go into the realms that this key and these archetypes have for us, there's, you know, we mutate along with them. Okay. I came across a really interesting quote by Carl Jung in The Undiscovered Self, where he says, a mood of universal destruction and renewal has set its mark on our age. This mood makes itself felt everywhere politically, socially, and philosophically. 
we are living in what the Greeks called the kairos, the right moment for a metamorphosis of the gods, of the fundamental principles and symbols. Coming generations will have to take account of this momentous transformation if humanity is not to destroy itself through the might of its own technology and science. So much is at stake and so much depends on the psychological constitution of the modern human. There's so many things about this quote that feel significant to our conversation today. And one of those is the, you know, constitution of the human psych psychology is that the shape of the psychic structure, the quality of consciousness is what's bringing the shapes outside as we've talked about. The other part I want to go into is this kairos, this metamorphosis of what he's saying, the gods, the symbols or principles, those are archetype. So the metamorphosis of the archetype, I feel like it occurs alongside of our evolution. So let's go into Saturn. I'm definitely tuning in and feeling the evolution of Saturn where my sense is that there's a massive upgrade in Saturn's functionality in our system. Um, as, as, you know, as it's transit, it's transited its own sign of Capricorn, and it's right now like hovering over the cusp of the very end degrees of Capricorn into the next sign and then back over again. It's like, okay, am I complete, am I reaching this next stage of my Capricornness, my Saturnianness? And also the fact that, you know, Saturn in, in this phase of transiting its own sign, it made a conjunction with Pluto, the mutator. So it's evolving. So to explore this, I start out by asking, how has Saturn been operating? How has it been utilized through the current framework of consciousness? So I explored this by doing a mind map with who has Saturn been in my own self system. And here are some of the things that came up. Saturn to me is my protector. Uh, it's the boss, the controller, the lawmaker enforcer, the perfectionist, the punisher, the patriarch. It's success driven and it puts on the pressure and it's driven to be great. So I want to be clear that none of this is inherently bad. It's just energy adapting and evolving. And what I have come clear on is how the this frequency of Saturn in my life has usurped my essential energy to achieve an agenda that's geared towards surviving in a paradigm of dominance and control in a patriarchal consumer culture. We're going to go deeper into this, but first I want to go to then, well, what is high grade Saturn look like? So I did a mind map on that. And some of the words that came through were conductor, orchestrator, director, creative author, true authority, conscious dom, ship captain, aware ego, holistic institutions, enlightened structures, in service to my calling. So engaged from a more expansive perspective, Saturn reveals its higher capacities to serve me in reaching the mountaintop of my life's purpose. Saturn is in devotion to the higher order and to my calling. It's not about like, get to the top of the mountain for success. It's, I'm here for a reason. What's my soul's directive? 
And it's good to remember that Saturn and Capricorn, it's, you know, the, the sign that it represents and is an active agent of, is yin. So we, I mean, we get this sense of like Capricorn is like driven and going and so like young, but I think that's seen and operating within where we've been, you know, what state of consciousness our world has been operating inside of. And so to feel into the yin aspect, it puts me into contact with the inner calling. How is my inner calling receiving a dose of new adaptive structures that can support me in, you know, expressing what I'm here to express. So I want to explore a little bit more. Saturn, as an archetype, has its eye on our fulfillment. And it's driven to get us to the top of the mountain. At a lower octave of operation, Saturn will implement inefficient strategies at arriving to this destination because there's an end goal and that end goal tends to be like you know who I truly am or what's my full potential or I know what I'm capable of or I've seen that vision of like what I'm here to do and what's my contribution but my life keeps you know I keep coming from over here and I want to get there and some of the strategies that Saturn will implement at this level is try harder. <laughs> Enforce a plan, you know, Let, let's make a strategy, make the goal, like get on the plan and then put the pressure on to follow the steps. Do better. When I feel this energy in my system, it's like so contracted. <laughs> So these strategies don't gain us much traction for many reasons, but one being that they're running on an inefficient energy of inadequacy. Like a fundamental sense of our lack of worth and then a real try to prove maybe that we're not. And this is interesting to see mirrored in our own energy systems on this planet, how we power our world with crude fossil fuels from a perspective of lack. That sounds like the inefficient engine that we run our own drive to power our purpose. Interesting. And we've been dependent on these strongholds of protection in the psyche. These regimes of control that are inherited over millennia of adaptive survival strategies. So fortresses of the frontal lobe that rise out of the deep survival brain. Those selves that I mentioned in who Saturn has been are those strongholds of protection. You know, the protector comes in and censors everything because it's constantly on watch for what is going to be, you know, what's okay and what's not okay for survival. So part of upgrading into a higher level of Saturn requires a dismantling of these strongholds of protection. We'll go into that a little bit more, but I think first and foremost, self-esteem and establishing a core stability of inherent worth is a huge part of this maturation and development. So to tap into these higher capacities of Saturn, we've got to have a solid base. Like when I'm good with myself, the energy feels very different about how I go about getting to my mountaintop. And the dismantling of these strongholds is a process that I engage with kindness and compassion. I have, you know, a self, a self love and, re, you know, relate to this part of me is, yeah, you were adapting to your surroundings. I get it. Pushing those parts away and being like, oh, those regimes of control, damn that controller, go away, stop being controlling is not effective or hasn't been for me. 
what became the most effective thing in my own evolution, creating the most traction of becoming more of myself was when I stopped trying to get rid of them and I started to engage with them and be curious and then reorient my center of gravity to a new point of consciousness that can provide the protection and safety and trust that our human psyche needs to function properly, but from a new level of operations. And this is that transmission of, you know, high grade Saturn, taking everything into account, taking all of my cells, it's the conductor that synthesizes the parts and can implement new strategies of how it utilizes my essential energies. Just how at the shadow, it uses my energy to like go fulfill this goal over here. In this octave, it's, you, you know, it's allowing that energy to more naturally unfold for its true purpose. So this brings us to the notion of true authority. When it comes to the theme authority, I think we're processing millennia of dogmas and doctrines that have claimed our complete codependence on an external creator that has complete dominion over us, as well as the command and control infrastructures of our governments over the last centuries and their dominions over us that has led to a slow dissolution of, tr of our basic trust in God, in life, in our fellow, you know, friends in the infrastructures and hierarchies, and also in ourselves. So when it comes to the questions, who's in control? Who gets to decide? Where's my free will in the, ma in the matter, you know? As the narrative evolves, into one of greater interdependence and a new cosmology or worldview emerges where we view ourselves and our vehicle as a conscious quantum hologram of the universe. The question of who's in control and who gets to decide falls back on to the individual, the only place that we have true authority. So who's in control of this vehicle? Who's in the commander seat of pirate ship Amelie? I, I don't know if I'm a pirate. I think, <laughs> I think I'm more just sailing on the seas for enjoyment. <laughs> Depends on who's in control of the ship. <laughs> and I, yeah, I think that looking at these low and high grades of Saturn and really contemplating where we're at in our process, how often am I in my controller that's trying to exercise control externally to stay safe, um, as opposed to when am I seated in a sense of I'm good, I'm with myself, and I can sort of see the various points of agendas and different things that my selves are like, hey, this is what we need, this is what we want, and I can listen oh okay you know I'm because I'm safe here I don't need to strongly attach to any one of these things it becomes a whole different game and I am literally just peeking into this world myself of what it feels like to sit in that seat of being the conductor of the orchestra of Amelie so one thing I want to say here, because we're dealing with authority and these regimes of control, um, you know, in our societies and just what's topically alive in the conversation right now of like, you know, this pandemic and how Saturn Pluto cycles tend to bring up these shifts in power, you know, things are revealed like the shadows that have become embedded into the structures of society start to rise up and people are pointing out all the things like, look at this injustice and oh, like, whoa, Watergate, whoa, 9-11, like all these things happened around Saturn, Saturn and Pluto cycles. So in this one, what feels important right now to understand is that no, 
regimes of control and corruption that are active in the world's governments and societal institutions do not have control over your consciousness. In the documentary of Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, uh, Stephen Greer says, there's enormous power when you're operating at a deeper level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. A power that the intelligence community is very much afraid of because it's something A, they cannot control, and B, it would transcend their ability to alter the outcome. What I feel moving through these, this planet of Saturn is this message. We alter the outcome with our consciousness. So getting clear on what am I choosing? Am I choosing to cooperate in concert with life? Am I choosing to see the beauty and the sheer miracle of this life even when it hurts and it, there's suffering? Am I choosing to see myself in the reflection of those around me and reclaim my energies back to myself? I think getting clear on this transition, doing a mind map of the old and the new paradigms and really getting a sense for like, okay, how are my energies tied into these things over here in the old paradigm? And how are my energies on a daily basis? How am I choosing things that are in alignment with these qualities over here in this exploration of the new paradigm. So in coming to a close, once again, I must reiterate how, yes, coherence is so important. And the most coherent states are when we are being with wherever we are at. That's the allow, accept, embrace of the shadow that Richard Rudd reveals and brings to life through the jinkies. When we can be with the shadows, because they're there, we're, uh, we have parts of us that are operating from these shadows. When we can be with them, then we move the energy on its evolutionary process and we become coherent. So be kind to the strongholds of protection and the unconscious default modes that are becoming conscious by coming up and acting themselves out through greater vehicle of awareness. So it's all part of the process. Be gentle with yourself. And I hope this contemplation has been supportive for you. There's always more. And I just love the feeling that in this series, we're gonna just continue following and opening and seeing what's there next. So yeah, we looked at Saturn in the 60. There's probably gonna be more coming through that. And we looked at Pluto in the 61. And there's already more coming through that. So stay tuned and please share in the chat, um, share in the comments below. What are some of the things that you're seeing at this time? How is the archetype of Saturn evolving in you? How are you being made by these times? Thank you.